Hey everyone, it's Mike from Order Flows, and I just want to shoot this quick video to discuss the volume profile and how to use it with order flow analysis. Now this is the bones from Monday and this morning, Tuesday, uh, March 12th and 13th of 2018. Now it's been a while since I've done some videos. I've just got a lot of stuff going on in, in my personal life at the moment that we're trying to get all sorted out. And I, I really was hoping to have more videos done this year, but um, you know, as, as luck and fate would have it, I'm a little bit... Uh, behind the eight ball but uh, you know I'm starting to carve out the extra time during the day and hopefully I can get start getting more videos up here on a regular basis um, but before I begin a brief disclaimer this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or making any type of investment decision futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance not necessarily indicative of future results. Tools I use in this presentation, um, I'm just using the order flows trader software, which is the volume footprint chart, and it runs on NinjaTrader 7 and NinjaTrader 8. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the bones. It was very interesting. So lately, you know, the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of interesting things uh, happening in the markets, you know, been a lot of volatility, and um, I, I just saw something yesterday and watched it uh, develop this morning in the buns. And you know, I want to shoot this quick video just to show you how you can use the different tools in in order flow together to hopefully uh, find better trades and improve your trading. So let's take a look. Okay, so yesterday in the buns we had this very we had this P-shaped formation on the volume profile. It's it's the prof, it's the uh, histogram there on the left side of the chart, and you can see it's just you know your classic uh, P shape, which indicates short covering in the market. And what was interesting about this is basically since about you know six thirty seven in the morning until until the close, we were just trading in this tight range um, from the high up there at uh, what is that thirty six, basically down to twenty four. And you know we're just hanging, hanging in that tight range, and then, and then we close for the day. Then we reopen on on the bottom end. But when you see a shape like this, you know it's very tight. Well, I'll say very tight range, but a fairly compact range. It was Monday in the buns. Um, you know, not not a whole lot to really move the market. And you ended up for basically almost uh, over half the session just trading in that very tight range to close out the session. Now, if you look on a daily chart. Okay, so this is the Bunn's daily chart, and you know, basically since uh, last week, you know, we've had this low down here. It was at 156, about uh, 28, 29, and we've been rallying up. So it, I'm not surprised to see some short covering. This is today's bar here, the 13th. This is yesterday's bar. So you know, we we shot up and we just sort of hung around here. Now again, if you're using a normal candlestick chart or a bar chart, and most people use candlesticks nowadays because it's a little easier on the eye to determine stuff. But um, you know you, you wouldn't de you couldn't determine that you had this P-shape forming right here in the volume profile. Um, you know that, that's why you know candlesticks are you know they're sort of a rudimentary form of order flow analysis in the terms of yeah you could see what the high the low was or, or the market opened closed and you know did the market close higher than it opened. But uh, beyond that, th there's not much else you really can glean too much from uh, just a bare naked uh, candlestick chart. But if you saw the volume profile, what do you see? All right, you see that P-shape, which indicates short covering. Now, it wasn't just between short covering and, you know, a market about to rally. Well, realize, you know, we just come up from, you know, basically about 100 points, you know, 100-point rally on from um, last week. You know, you, you even had the low down here on uh, the 6th. But, you know, we're rallying up, rallying up. So all these people, even you had people that were, um, you know, short from here, Market sold off, thinking, okay, yeah, it's fine. But now what? It's, it's starting to come back up. It's starting to come back up towards, um, you know, the highs, the monthly highs. So, you know, all these people that were short, you know, realized, hey, you know what? We're not selling off. We're, we're on our way back up. So we just had a, a move up, came off a little bit. Okay, you know, they're taking this opportunity to get out here rather than, you know, breaking out to new highs. Now, why is this important? Well, on this day, on Monday, right, so you have this P-shape, which indicates uh, short covering. Now, when you have short covering, you know, you want to be looking, is it just sh short covering or is there new initiating positions coming into the market? And you just don't see anything on this day yesterday. I mean, if you just go through the, you know, I mean, you can just see every time you'd, you'd rally up, you get signs of price rejection, you know, in the order flow, even here, you, you come off to the lower end of this value area 
you've got price rejection down here, price rejection up there. So, so it's sort of indicating that we're going sideways. I mean, the other the other thing that we're going sideways is you just sort of see these alternating bars. Point of control in the bars, you know, is almost. I mean, you can see it right here. But you know, as as the day goes on, you know, we're not really going anywhere. You know, with with the individual bars, point of controls. So then coming into today on the 13th, again, you know, what happens? Yeah, we open up here, sort of on the, on the lower end of the value area. And, you know, if, if you were to take yesterday's value area, right, it's basically, you know, 24. You know, if, if you were to uh, uh, draw a, a line out. And, you know, this is why it's important to understand where yesterday's value area is. Um, you know, when you know, why is that open? When you know where the value area is yesterday, especially if, if you have a P shape or a B shape, then, you know, it's going to give you a little bit more information coming into the next day. Now, not every day you're going to have a P shape like this, but on the days you do, watch for the next day. Okay, so let's just, you know, take, you know, a, a brief eyeballing value area. We'll call that value area low. Obviously, this will be the uh, value area um, high up here. even if you want to call it 36, but I call it 34. Um, so this is your value area from yesterday, right? You can see how we're just trading inside that range yesterday. So we're coming into today and watch what happens, okay? We break down, rally back into it. Break down, rally back into it. Break down, get down, you know, through it. Um, you know, we come all the way down here to 15, but then watch what happens. You got a single print here indicating price rejection. So you, you got some signs that price is being rejected below value, yesterday's value area low. Then as you're rallying back up, boom, you get this nice stack buying and balance up in here. Let's make this chart a little bit bigger. And that's a good sign. You know, you're coming up, you're coming up to um, yesterday's high. You've got a stack buying and balance. You've got a stack buying and balance as you're getting ready to break through yesterday's value area high as well so you're in yesterday's value area you just tested below it obviously it got rejected you're trading back into it so chances are if we're going to start breaking above it you know position yourself here you could have got uh, you know if you were to buy that breakout you got a couple quick ticks but watch it again as, as you broke through you come back in and then you see the buying imbalances again you know this is a great bar right here this four four fifteen bar to look to be getting long. I mean, you should have been getting long, you know, in this bar right here. But by the time you start seeing this other buying and balance, 988 here, 924 here, you know, it's all systems go. And then we, we pop up really quick over the next, basically next two or three minutes, um, you know, from 37, 38, all the way up to, um, you know, 48. That's a quick 10 ticks. You do get a little selling. You get a stack selling balance. So you, get a, you rally up to the high of the day at this point um, in the buns. And you get stack selling imbalance. Okay, I like stack selling imbalances at the high of the day. It, it's a great short opportunity. And you know, if you're getting short here, 42, 43, you know, where do you trade? You're going to trade right back into yesterday's value area, back down to 33. It's another 10 ticks. So you got a nice move up here, a nice move back down in here. <coughs> now notice, we're not really, you know, the market at this point is, is you know, it, it's just you know, has it accepted it yet? No, we're just sort of hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. And then, you know, watch as, as you start trading away from that value area, you know, what's the potential? Well, if we're starting to move away from that value area, if the market is no longer accepting that value area, what's going to happen? It's going to find a new value area, right? And it's either going to be above it or below it. So you got to look for those signs in the order flow. And you can see it here, it's starting to move up. You got the higher point of controls, one, two, three, right here. You know, before all the point of controls in the bars are inside. Now you're starting to see the point of controls outside. Now obviously the bars are trading above it, but again, you know, it, it's a nice opportunity. Then here you got single print, single print, indicating, you know, there's there's price rejection down here that we you know what you know we're rejecting yesterday's value area, even though you know we're starting to rally, but it's leaving these little tails here saying, hey, you know what, we're rejecting that value area down in here, the value area from yesterday, and then boom, you know, again we rally all the way up to 60. So, you know, that was interesting. That was to me that, that was very interesting um, information that you could have just gleaned from a simple uh, order flow volume footprint chart and using volume profile again you know it's not every day you get those p-shaped formations but when you do you know pay attention to them watch how the market reacts the next day you know it, there's 
ticks to be had in the market every day. So, you know, sometimes it's it's more obvious than others, but yesterday, Monday, was with that P-shaped formation in a, a fairly tight range. It, it gave a trader opportunities coming into the next day to trade around. So if you want to learn more about Orderflow, subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit orderflows.com. And again, you know, if you're more interested in order flow, go to my website. You can find out a lot more information about order flow. So thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.